All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today for our 30 minute webinar. Uh, we're excited to have you all here. And what the purpose of this is, is for us to talk real briefly about the upcoming summit and chapter academy falls underneath that. And what does that mean? What does that look like when you come to summit as well as, as the academy? So Todd's gonna talk to us a little bit about that. Then we're going to talk with Peggy. Peggy's our facilitator for Chapter Academy and it's going to talk about what kind of content to expect in our breakouts and our pre and post webinars. And then I'm going to follow up with registration, the down and dirty about how to register, pricing, who should come, uh, things like that. So um, Todd, I'm going to let you kick us off and just kind of talk a little bit overarching. What is Leadership Summit? Yep, sure. Well, hello, everybody, and hello, appreciate. Everybody. Can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yep. Good. Thanks. I um, appreciate the opportunity, Jen, to come in and talk. You know, we're excited, right, Jen, to be building the summit for this year. This will be really the second year in this this format, and as you can see on the slide, what we're doing is really bringing the three key leadership programs together under one roof. We all meet. Uh, this year in Houston, promises to be the warm Houston uh, this year. Um, so we bring together the impact cohort. That one is designed for um, kind of mid to senior uh, senior level leaders. And then we have your academy, which again with Peggy and Jen are looking at, you know, how, how best to grow and build the chapter. And then we bring in our EDGE program. The EDGE is this year going to be almost 45 um, new and emerging leaders, right? Those are those that are just considering getting into leadership or um, are, are just kind of getting into leadership. And, you know, they all have different focuses and different topics. But what's interesting is that we do come together um, in Houston for that two and a half days and you know, it's really designed to take advantage of networking amongst leaders, right? You're all leaders that are attending, leading in different forms and fashion. But we've built in a lot of opportunities for cross-cutting um, networking, um, just some social gathering so that we can learn and grow from each other because that's a big part of uh, the learning process, right? So we have a lot of opportunities through our social in our uh, morning plenary sessions to get together and learn. And so just kind of briefly, you know, we're going to kick off on that Thursday around two o'clock. I, I don't know. Are you going to get more into this? Should I just? You should go through um, the part here and then uh, Jennifer is going to, um, Jennifer and I are going to pick up and talk more specifically about the Academy. So whatever you can give us um, in terms of making this a schedule feel alive. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Peggy. And so, you know, we're going to kick off at two thirty on three thirty at two thirty on Thursday. And we've taken a lot of feedback from the last um, last year's session. So we're going to open for an hour, hour, hour and a half. You know, welcome um, opening uh, speakers. It's all around. This year is really focused on moving from transaction to transformation leadership. Right? How do we move? Um, into that more trans uh, transformational space, um, visionary, you know, because we're all looking uh, to have to grow and for our organizations into that space. So that's going to be our consistent theme. So we'll all, all 400 of us will gather um, for that initial kickoff. But then we're going to break out, you know, around <laughs> four o'clock, we're going to go into each individual cohorts. And we got this last year. Um, that we really wanted to expand on. So from 4 to 5.30, you'll go into your individual group. This is where we're going to have some fun. We're going to do some individual team building. If you were a part of some chapter academies in the past, there's a lot of fun team building. You know, people just asked us, you know, I don't know everybody. I don't know what the other chapters are doing. So how can we get together more um, and just kind of learn from each other and really just kind of meet um, and uh, get to know each other. So we're spending a lot more time, right, Peggy and Jen, in that space, right? Just having fun, learning through fun. And so you'll see that right off the bat um, before we get into a lot of the deep learning um, is just taking time for team building. 
And then we're going to kind of keep that fun going. We're going to have a, a kind of a networking reception at night, 6.30 to 9. Uh, we're, we've expanded it, you know, so we'll have some food and some fun. We're going to bring in our suppliers as well. Um, we hope to have some uh, activities and, again, continuation in that networking theme. So, again, everybody gets a chance to really um, get to know each other. And then once we hit Friday, that's when we kind of go into our cohorts. We'll open every morning at 8.30, uh, 8.30 to 11. We'll kind of get into our um, cross cohorts. Everybody will come together again, about 400 of us. And we're really looking at cross-cutting leadership topics, right? Um, things that it doesn't matter if I'm emerging or a senior leader. It's things that we all need to know. But this year, again, through feedback, we're really going to drive that home to the yeah. procurement. So we have um, Kristen Webb. I don't, many of you may know her. She'll be joining us uh, as one of our key facilitators, along with two other facilitators. Um, but we'll be discussing, again, cross-cutting topics, but it'll be much more interactive. Um, on Friday, we're going to do something called the paper chase simulation. You know, again, we're going to get you up and moving. We are going to move the cheese. We're going to get you out of your comfort zone. We're going to kind of push some limits here and, and just have some fun um, in these cross um, cutting cohorts. That's a lot of C's. Um, and then 1130 to 130, we're going to do, again, some networking lunches. Again, um, just giving you plenty of time to, to interact. And then from 130 to about 530-ish or so, you'll go into uh, your cohort, which would be the academy, you'll spend that time with Peggy and Jen, uh, and they're going to talk about it a little bit more. But uh, really, right, I have to listen to this. Then. Kind of focused no in on. I'll talk to you later. Focused in on um, on the chapter specific leadership components. Come Saturday, we'll do it all again. Um, we'll meet at eight thirty. We'll we'll have breakfast every morning, so we'll all all be well well fed throughout. That won't be a problem. Um, we'll do the plenaries from 8.30 to 11. Really on Saturday, we're really looking at emotional intelligence. How do you cultivate emotional agility? How do you be flexible in that? We're going to do some, um, some games again um, to kind of build in that area. We'll go for lunch for 11.30 to 1, and then you'll go from 1 to 5. <laughs> as uh, the academy comes together um, for that last session. And then we're going to do dinner. Uh, we'll do dinner all together. If you attended last year, um, we'll have a, a formal dinner. Uh, not formal as in dress, but um, we'll all get together, have a sit-down dinner. And um, I think we're getting close on our entertainment. So um, if you like to have some fun, I think it'll be a fun time, Jen um, and Peggy, um, Saturday night as we um, kind of close off the session. Again, through feedback, we're closing it um, Saturday so everybody can kind of head out on Sunday, um, you know, to have still a little bit of a weekend before uh, everybody starts back to work. So a little quick look, but a lot of, uh, a lot of things available. Uh, really appreciate the feedback you provided last year. I think we've taken pretty much all of it and, and continue to enhance the program for all of you. You know, I love, Todd, that that you've made these changes here based on the feedback. And that's sort of a lesson that we all can take even at our chapter level is to remember to ask the people in the room and ask those that didn't make it even uh, what they think so that you can build a better program. So thanks for modeling <laughs> <laughs> that exactly as uh, we like we like to have our folks think about it. Um, Jennifer, uh, why don't we um, launch into uh, sort of a look at the academy itself and um, take a take a, a, a more in depth um, piece of this? And I'll start, and then you just jump in and, and help me out here. We want to um, make sure that everybody here and everybody that's listening um, in on this after the fact um, get a better sense of how we're going to use our time in those cohorts. Um, and we're going to start with that Thursday. And that Thursday, we're going to really build just an opportunity for what I call getting to know each other 
And I will give a little hint here. We're going to have some friendly competition amongst the areas um, as a way to kick off the learning and idea sharing. So there's going to be some learning, but the whole idea here really is the sharing. So we're going to keep you keep you moving, keep you guessing. You might want to make sure you're up on all of your um, facts. Uh, and you might want to, in advance, make sure you know who's in your area. Any of these could be surprise questions in our fun competition. Um, so that'll be our, our Thursday. And we know that we're asking um, a big chunk of time from everybody that comes, but we think that Thursday is gonna be a really valuable opportunity for you to get to know the other people in the room. Um, and so really wanna encourage you to, to, to be able to participate for that. In the afternoon of Friday, um, and we've done the same thing um, Tom did. We've really um, taken a look at what what feedback you gave us, but also what feedback we saw come out of the dashboards. And so we're going to take um, the day one and we are going to dive deep into this conversation around member engagement. So it's what many of you have said is we're just, we're struggling to get more people to show up at our events, to be plugged into our chapters and how do we get the newer careerists to come up and, and, and be more involved? And so Friday is going to be a great opportunity. We're going to be weaving in some uh, great bright spots from around the chapter system, as well as bringing in some, some uh, data, some research, some additional ideas. And we're going to spend some time really defining for each of our, <laughs> each of our, each of ourselves and then collectively what does it mean to um, engage members, to draw them in um, to the chapter? Um, and I love it already. We're getting, of course, a little competition in the chat. I'm totally loving that. Then on Friday, we're going to continue the conversation, but take it into this idea of, okay, we understand what people want maybe and, and how to draw them in. What does it look like? What do the events look like? What do the services look like? What do the activities look like? I mean, what can we actually put together that's going to make all that member involvement happen? So, and in the context of both of these, you're going to see us weaving in, how do you get more people to say yes to the volunteer? So we're really going to focus in on how chapters can provide a great deal more um, uh, intentionality around this idea of drawing people in. Now, it's, you know, we want to give you as much time to play with concepts, um, even more time than we did last year. Uh, we know that you all really enjoyed that one activity where we had you um, uh, sort of the, it was the modified poster walk where you went and you created stuff and then you walked around and looked at each person. So we want to build in more of that time, which means that we want to make sure that the facts, the figures, the you know the content, which is digestible, is actually in your hands before you come. And so that segues into how we are going to build the program um, writ large. And so what I mean by that is that Gross. we're actually going to start the learning in January. We're going to have a 90-minute webinar January 30th, a 90-minute webinar on the 13th of February, um, uh, that we're going to continue that learning in March 26th and April 23rd. So we've got a, we've got four additional opportunities for us to take a look at the content, to chew on it, and to learn, and to and to and to figure out how we can really activate it. Now we spread this out in a in a longer time frame last year. This year we're going to bring it in tight so that you all within the first two quarters of the year you've got content, you've got opportunity to um, really explore it. Super excited um, to let you know that one of the first of these webinars that's going to be coming out um, is going to be on the concept of boot camp and how do you really onboard your leadership, because that's an important part of making sure that you have what you need to succeed for the year. So watch for news on that. We're nailing down um, speakers and content, but it's going to be a real great opportunity for you to see and learn from another chapter um, uh, really about the ins and outs of an, of an onboarding program that, uh, that builds volunteer muscle in your organization. So, okay, so yes. Can I add one thing too? So especially the March and April um, webinars, 
as of right now, Peggy and I haven't created any content for that. And we did that on purpose. And this came out of last year's Chapter Academy and that we completely flipped our minds of what we thought we wanted to talk about because we waited until we got in person to see what everybody was really, what the pain point was, what the struggle was. And then we developed with those two post webinars, more discussion about what really, where did this group and their conversation go? So um, we have ideas, we know where we think we wanna go, but it'll also depend on you all and what we decide in person about what subject matter we go in depth on to March 26th and April 23rd. So glad that you underscored that because that's that's really important. We This is really an opportunity for you all to design yep. your learning, which is great. Um, I'm going to pause for just a moment because um, the combination of Todd, Jennifer, and I just laid out sort of uh, a big chunk of information about the schedule, um, a little bit about the content agenda, and about the flow in particular for the Academy. I want to pause and just sort of do a check. Um, other than the fact that I can see that there's already a big competition over which area is best, are there any questions about schedule or content or flow? Um, and as I'm giving you the opportunity to either put in chat or, or to, uh, to unmute a question, do know that we are going to talk about registration coming up. So we're going to get to that, that conversation. But is there anything that makes that didn't quite make sense or any clarifying questions on schedule? <laughs> no competitiveness in this group at all. None at all. I'm glad to hear that. And you know what? I will add, Peggy, why we just give anybody a few minutes to type in a question. For those of you that may be new or incoming leaders that have never heard of Academy, um, you know, this is something that we started, oh gosh, it's been eight or nine years ago. I think we're one out of our 10 year anniversary. And it was really a standalone program in which we brought our chapter leaders together um, to, to this point Peggy talked about is really help you um, and train you and focus on how to make yourself a stronger chapter. And as that has, program has evolved, um, that's where Todd and the rest of our education team came in and brought it in to be a piece of a larger component in which you're not only getting this, how can you make your uh, chapter stronger and network with chapter leaders, but expand that because you are a leader within the Institute being um, a leader within the chapter. So those who may, you know, just heard about this or not full understanding, just a little bit about where it came from um, and our end goal with that. Right. And I see a question and I know Jennifer will be answering that shortly on the, on the registration. Uh, let me build on what uh, Jennifer just said, because I think part of what we're going to have to do, all of us have to do is to justify putting that this much time into it, putting time to be into Houston, putting time in. Um, and I, I want to make sure that it was clear. One of the things that Todd was saying was that when we were a standalone program, we really talked about you as a chapter leader. We focused on you, you and the chapter chapter. By being a part of the larger picture, the whole leadership summit, we get a chance to focus on you, the leader in your profession and in the rest of your life, as well as you, the leader. So if you're justifying to um, in the powers that be to say, should I be there? Yes, uh, you know, I'm going to get leadership training that's going to help me. I'm going to bring it right to back to the workplace as well as to my volunteer um my volunteer position. So just a thought about that. That's one of the reasons why we think it's a real benefit to be part of the of the leadership summit. So the only question I see is um, Nora's very good question. I know we're going to get to that. So let me, with permission, I'll move through to the next slide so we can talk about sort of the core of the program a little bit more deeply and then get right into those registration questions um, before, before we get to, too far down the road. Um, we're going to go into this de in depth a little bit more, but I am sure that you all by now understand that the core um, aspect of this program is really the chapter dashboard. And we view the chapter dashboard, as Jen has said, is really a powerful tool for you. Um, and the intent of this is to be both a guide 
So what does research tell us that makes a healthy, sustaining chapter, right? As well as a playbook for setting your goals and metrics that allow you, in fact, to evaluate your success. I like to think of it, and I like to make sure that um, people sort of also put this in the back of their mind. The dashboard is one more thing. It's a common ground for all of us to use to support each other. One of the cool things we saw coming out of this of this past year is chapter ambassadors who were able to meet with chapters and share results and talk with them a little bit more about what they could do with with what they've learned in terms of their their in terms of how they've um, they've been able to um, achieve their goals. So it's really an opportunity for us to support you. Essentially, it is about four key areas, um, four buckets, if you will, leadership operations, uh, member involvement, member services. Um, and it is an opportunity for you to compare yourself, as I said, against both the norm as well as your uh, previous um, efforts. And it's an opportunity for you to begin to look at yourself along the metrics of, wow, I'm at risk in an area, so I need to focus on it. Um, I'm in a place which is okay, but it's cautionary. Um, I've got a here's a bucket where I'm absolutely sustaining, and here's a here's a place where we're high performing. And so, just simply by using this, you're able to get a sense of where you might want to spend some time, right? Now, some of you may be thinking, okay, this is great, and uh, I'm not sure. I wasn't really sure how to use it last year, and I'm not entirely sure how to use it this year. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna have a session where we're gonna talk a little bit more about this. But here's the bright news: we now are able to take a look at how chapters are doing as a whole. And look at this: there's some pretty good news in this package, right? So one of the reasons why we're not going to spend a lot of time, for example, in operations when we're face to face is because look at this, almost 41, inching into 42% are sustaining and then another 23 are high performing. So many of you understand the operations, right? And a fair number of you have got some good things going on with leadership, but there's a yellow caution light. Well, in order for us to deal with leadership, we have to really look at where's the pain point member engagement, member involvement. And of course, that draw, that's driven in part by what are you offering them. So I just wanted you all to know that when we did, when we went and we dug back into the data, we found some really wonderful news. And we also allowed us to say, okay, where are the pain points and how do we help? Now, the cool thing is, is we're going to be sharing more about this. The folks that are purple, have got some great stories. The folks that have got some green lights have got some great stories. So what we've been doing is digging into the data and finding out what is true across all the folks that have say a purple or a green so that we can really feed that back to you to, to, to know. And so it's interesting, it's really easy for us in operations, um, but, but an example of how the folks that have a purple in leadership is, this effective practice around how are we onboarding and orienting. And that's why we're going to start with the boot camp concept, because part of what builds leadership is building that camaraderie and that, that culture of preparedness and that culture of working together. So I just wanted to share that with you more coming on this, but just some real exciting news. And, you know, before I turn this over to Jennifer to talk about the registration, I personally want to just give you a round of applause because you actually scored some really great things and you've given us a wonderful opportunity for us to help you continue your progress in these areas. Um, oh, Tracy's got a great question and I'm going to, I'm going to ask uh, Jennifer to see, to answer that question. Um, would the person who went from our chapter last year know where we are on this? Jenna. That's a great question, Tracy. Um, yes, you should. That person should have access to their dashboard in which in each one of these four categories, you'll have your scoring color. So you'll know where you fall in that. Um, that's one of the things that we'll work on, especially in January is, you know, you have to create an account in our open water. That's what we use for these dashboards and making sure that those who filled it out last year 
either give you access or give you a copy, but we're going to ask chapters to submit them again, whoever is coming, so you can see if things were made, um, transitions, um, programs were put in place, whatever you may have when you looked at this, but you should have access. If not, start sending me emails offline and I can get you PDF copies so you have at least what was submitted last year. Because what we want to try to see, and you know, sometimes bringing something new into the fold is hard and we want, it may take a couple of years for you all to understand or utilize the word dashboard. And what does that mean when you take it and you take the results and decide from it, this is our caution areas and we wanna plan two new things or two new outcomes to change that color for us for next year. And that's what our intent with the dashboard is. And um, Jennifer, as I switched the slide here, I saw a comment from um, Robin and Robin, you're not alone. Um, there was a couple of chapters that didn't finish their dashboards, don't worry. Um, whether you did it or not last year does not impact um, how we're going to move forward this year. So thank you for asking that question. And we'll actually figure out where where you are on that dashboard. And um, But we're going to start from a clean slate. It's good to know where you were last year just because it helps you uh, build on that. So we'll we'll get back in touch with you. Thanks for asking that question. Yeah, yeah. Robin, it's it's not a make or break. It's not, oh, you didn't do one. You know, yes, you may not have data in that those stats, but those stats really combined that you see are really for Peggy and on the Institute for us to know where we should be spending our time in doing um, training and resources for you all. When you all take it, it's really for you all to sit as a board and decide where and what do I want to change within our chapter. So it really will benefit you or behoove you as a, as a chapter to make sure to complete that in, in your year cycle. And then you can compare it year after year. Did we move the needle? Did we make that change? Excellent. So here in these last few minutes, I'll talk down and dirty about the registration. Um, we have the link here at the top of the slide. And if I can ask Caitlin, I know she posted the schedule in the chat. Um, Caitlin, if you could go to the Academy part of the website and and um, put in this link. I'd appreciate it. This is where you will go to register. Um, Nora, you did ask. You are correct. The first chapter leader is of zero dollars. Thank you very much to Sourcewell for continuing to sponsor this for our chapter leaders. That first leader registrant um, for zero dollar gets you three nights of hotel and all your meals except Friday night. Friday night is the only free night for you to, to go out on your own, go out and as a group, go out with chapters and your leaders, uh, with um, leaders within the chapter area, um, just whatever you would like to do. The sec, if you'd like to send a second person, that fee is $850. And that too will cover three nights of um, hotel and your meals, except for Friday. And the chapter is to cover all travel costs. This has been pretty standard for us um, throughout the last couple of years of what we will reimburse for you. But again, thank you to Sourcewell for um, ensuring and um, understanding the importance of our chapter leaders and getting you all there together by covering a good portion of that registration. I always get asked who should attend. Uh, you know, when we first created this program, it was our initial thought for all incoming um, presidents. So it would be your vice presidents, um, first vice presidents, whatever those titles may be called. But it certainly has expanded over the last three or four years that it can be for any of your chapter leaders. Some of you serve two year terms. Um, so you can um, send a treasurer, a chair, maybe even in some cases, I've seen some chapters who were potential leaders that they really wanted to, to hook in and thought this would be a great experience for them to see the community and the networking you get within the chapter leaders. I always get questions about sending two people and I'm gonna put um, Penny and Carrie um, from Idaho on the spot, if I could. Um, there is, I know it is a cost of certainly output for your chapters to send a second person, but the benefit and reward of sending two leaders is huge. Penny or Carrie, do you want to go off mute and, and kind of give us your thought on that? Sure, Jen, I will. Um, yeah, I, I have to say, um, 
a couple of different things. I, I think it's so important at least to send one, but I find, and I see somebody just said they sent their entire board, which is awesome. It's like anything else you go to where you can kind of divide and conquer, you know, to having two people there is always better than one because you hear more, you learn more, you you interact more with more people, you get more networking. So I think it's really important to to send at least two, probably more if you can. And the other thing I want to say is that um, don't think just because you've been once that you shouldn't go again. I have been for six years having been a chapter ambassador and every year I come home with more ideas and more, you know, you always come home more energetic and ready to go. And I have brought back a lot of different things, even just for my own chapter as well. So I think it's very helpful to do that. I know we're at three th or at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the, of the hour. Um, thank you, Penny, for just really giving us that incredible testimony uh, testimonial. Jennifer, what three nights are covered? Yep. I saw that question. So it is Thursday, Friday, and Saturday nights are what will be covered and paid for. So your travel would be coming in on Thursday. We don't start till 2.30. So if you come in a day early, you would need to cover the extra night. Um, and then for you to stay through Saturday night and then to depart on Sunday. Someone was asking, apparently it says that um, NAD covers Thursday to Saturday, which two nights, but your slide says three. So it is three nights. It is three nights. Yes. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, three nights. Excellent. Um, there may be additional questions. I'm going to just do a formal kind of a close for just a moment because I'll be promised um, uh, 3.30. And so please feel free to go. Uh, yes, we will have the slide deck um, and we will have a recording. And so we can stay here for just a few more minutes if people have additional questions, but I wanted to allow folks that need to get going to get going, know that we've got you covered. Um, so, um, hey, um, Haiti, yes, it will be a check-in on Thursday and it would be a check-out on Sunday. And if you want to leave it earlier, you could leave earlier. So it's Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday night. Yep. And I heard somebody talk about um, bringing in your um, entire board. This is a great opportunity where you could send two of your chapter leaders, uh, actually send four of your chapter leaders to summit in general. And nope. Jennifer um, will come back. Um, and sure. then two of them to impact, which yeah. is awesome. And then that still gives you time to bond as a board during joint sessions and meals, but allows your, your group to then break off your two people to their prospective cohorts. So certainly well worth um, spending the funds to do that, to have um, as many of your board members there, but only two to the actual chapter academy breakout is what we keep it at. All righty. Yeah, uh, so the travel is covered. The question Donna did ask, so any travel, so your plane, Ubers, um, parking, things like that would be covered by the chapter. What NIGP pays for is registration, the housing and those meals, except for Friday. And if you pay the eight fifty for that second registrant, that covers those things as well. Excellent. Good questions. Someone asked Stacey. if we're done for yes. If you need to go, go. Stacy, your hand is up. Yeah, I just wanted to say I'm the one who sent the entire board to the last one. Um. And our 2024 president coming in <clears throat> has elected to do the same thing. We had some of our members apply to Leaders Edge and get it. And so they were going to be there anyway. We had, um, you know, obviously the Chapter Academy one um, was free and the other one we, we sent as well. And then anyone else on the board that wanted to go, which ended up being everyone, um, up did the impact and it was a, a bonding experience. We all got something out of it. We spent lots of time together uninterrupted, which was great. And it, it makes sense as a team to go to something like this and learn together. Love that, Stacey. Thank you for sharing. I, I think that, 
you know, we talk about our transition meetings and um, getting your new board on board. This is another great way to bring that together. So thank you for sharing. There's also a good question in here, and I wish I had said it before everybody jumped off. When you fill out your registration form, we will make your housing for you as filling out that registration form. And IGP will book all of your um, hotels, whether you pay zero or you pay the 850, and then we will send you that confirmation registration number. You do not need to go to the hotel directly, even if you're staying an extra night. You just put that on the form. It'll ask for a credit card to hold that extra night, uh, but we will be doing all of that for you. Right. Does anybody else have any other questions? Um, the last slide we did have reg um, registration. Can you go back, Peggy? Just yeah, I sure can. This is recording. Is that you can register up until January seventeenth? So I know we're hitting the holiday season. I know most of you have already had your elections, but maybe still deciding who can go and who can meet those dates. Um, but we will take registrations up through the first of the year. So don't be surprised if you start getting emails from me come January 5th and 6th that we haven't heard from you yet. Does anybody else have any other questions? We Again, I promise we promise yes. to make it quick. Yes, Donna. We'll have a recording. Link. Yep. I will be sending that out as well as this slide deck for you all, uh, for everybody that I invited. So it was all your presidents, vice presidents, secretaries and treasurers. I will let you know, I don't have any of your new leaders yet. So no new leader forms have come in. So if you are considering sending and somebody's not on that distribution list, please forward this on to them um, or discuss it as a board. So I'm just using what current leaders I have in our system. Excellent. It is um, super exciting um, to be putting, doing the planning for this already. So uh, Jennifer and I are already, and of course, Todd with the rest of the program, we're already immersed in it um, and appreciate any of your comments or questions moving forward. So please keep, um, keep, in, keep uh, Jennifer in the loop with any questions that you have. Please remember the January 17th date. Um, and, and, you know, the webinars, by the way, just one last thing, anybody can come to the webinars. So maybe you even just say to yourself, if we're not bringing the whole board or if whatever, the, the, the webinars are open so you can still engage. That's another reason for us to do it this way. So we're not exclusionary. Um, I am super excited. <laughs> All right, um, guys. Thank you. Peggy, thank you so much. And as always, please email me with questions. Um, and Caitlin and I will get back to you on those. Um, and again, start getting people registered and getting excited for February. But thank you guys. Appreciate your time today. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Thank you, guys.